Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to review of Breed the Killers, the third studio record by the band Earth Crisis. Today we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the record, so I decided to go back and see if it still holds up or not. My story with this band is quite simple, I've stumbled upon their music video for the song Provoke on TV back in 2000 or 2001. I was a small kid back then, like 3 or 4 years old, but that song was just amazing. And years later, when I finally got the internet, I've decided to check out the entire discography of this band, and I loved every record. I've been their fan ever since. I've also reviewed Firestorm recently, so go check that review out. Breed the Killers is the first album with the current lineup, so we've got Carr on the vocals, Scott and Eric on the guitars. For Eric, this is the first album with the band. Bulldog on the bass and Dennis on the drums. Their production was handled by Andy Snip and it's tight, it's clean but heavy, no loudness or no clipping, I truly enjoy it, especially how the vocals and the drums are mixed. Message is diverse, the songs are mostly against oppressive governments, but we also have songs about straight edge movement, politics, society, addictions, the state of our planet, ecology, etc. Go read the lyrics by yourself, they are great. Structure of the tracks is between basic and advanced. Usually we have an intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, another change, chorus, outro. Sometimes it's slightly different where we have more segments. The music on this record could be described as old school metalcore and hardcore. The album starts with the song and begins. And the first thing I'm going to notice here is the drumming. Dennis playing is tight, I love his groove, his style, his precision, the double bass work, just everything. Then we have the bass work and it's audible. Bulldog mostly follows the guitars but we have some parts here and there where only the drummer and the bassist are playing together and I love those moments. Like in the title song for example. Then we have the guitar work by Scott and Eric and I just love it, we have some groovy parts, some chunky breakdowns some more melodic lead guitar work here and there, some faster playing, there's just everything on this record and most of it sounds amazing. Finally we have the vocals by Carr and he's one of my all time favorite singers, his yelling, shouting and screaming is always on point on this record, sometimes he sounds demented like on the previous record, Gomorrah's season ends, I just wish there was more of it you know, because most of his vocals here are slightly tame, he's like just doing them normally, I wish he would be more angry. Like for example the beginning of the song Wither, he's just screaming rrr, rrr, and I just love that stuff, I wish there was more of it on this record. So this opening track and begins is actually very good, I love the guitar riffs, the intro, the verses, the chorus, just everything, the drumming and the bass work is on point, the vocals great as usual. But for some reason why I still enjoy it, it's not that memorable to me. So 8 out of 10, filthy hands to famished mouths, now this song is way better than the previous one, I especially enjoy the chunky chorus and the verses, love those parts, and the bridge. This is a classic song, it's not perfect, but I do love it, 9 out of 10. Breed the Killers is actually quite interesting because it has more advanced structure than the previous songs, we have lots of changes here. I love the more melodic guitar work here and there, but also the bridge, that's my favorite part. And also we have some parts here and there where only the basses is playing, love that stuff. The vocals are on point as usual. 9 out of 10. Wither is the song where the intro has the most amount of power and anger in it, love that stuff. Then we have some good verses, the chorus is fun, same as the chorus. This song is nothing special except that intro, which is just stuck in my head. 8 out of 10, Ultra Militants is one of the highlights of this record, the verses go so hard, they're just so fucking good. The bridge is my least favorite moment, but everything else is on point, especially the drumming and the guitar riffs. 9 out of 10. Into the Fray is a masterpiece, I love the atmosphere of this song, the drumming yet again is my favorite part, the guitar riffs chunky and memorable, same as the vocals. This is a masterpiece. 10 out of 10. One Against All features Rap Flynn of Machine Head. I must say that this song is also a banger, it doesn't have any weak moments, 
the structure is more advanced, we have lots of different segments here and there. Love that part where rap is screaming because it has a new metal aesthetic to it. This is a classic song, 10 out of 10. Drug related homicide, now this song would have been like Wither, you know, nothing special but great. But then the breakdown happens and I just love it, it's so fucking good, 9 out of 10. Overseers, now this is my least favorite track on the record, it's still good, I do enjoy its very desolate atmosphere and the vocals as usual slay, 7 out of 10. Death Rate Solution is another song that is very memorable because of the guitar riffs, the drumming and the vocals. The segments here are very interesting, especially the bridge and the chorus, I just love this song, 10 out of 10. Unvanquished. Now this song is about being straight edge and I do enjoy it but I feel like the atmosphere is too dark here, like this song is kinda similar to Wither because of that. 8 out of 10. And the final song on the standard edition, Ecocide. Now this is a remake of the song from 1992 EP All Out War and I just love it. It's great finally to hear this song in a better quality and better sounding vocals because I feel that car got better with age when it comes to his screaming and shouting. This is a masterpiece, I love the original, I love this one even more because of the vocals. 10 out of 10. And now we have two bonus tracks that were recorded live. The first one is No Allegiance. This is also a remake of the song from 1992 All Out War EP. And yet again, I love this song very much. It has that hardcore punk feeling to it. The vocals are amazing. It's hard to believe that this is a live recording. 10 out of 10. And the final track, Standing Corpses. Now this one is interesting because it only appears here. So it was probably written for Breed the Curse, but they didn't record it in the studio. I don't know why, because this track has amazing groove and atmosphere. It's so desolate and just depressive. Love the vocals here. As I said before, it's hard to believe that this is a live recording. The song slaps. We also had two more songs recorded live in 1997. Fate of the Neo Gods and Smash or Be Smashed. They are also not present on this record, but they were re-recorded for the 2022 EP Vegan for the Animals. So go check that out. This track is 10 out of 10. To sum it up, the consistency is stable, the flow is fitting, reliability. Yeah, it's a great record. I am not giving it a better score because the overall mood of this record is so oppressive and depressive. It has that desolate feeling about it that it actually ruins my mood if I'm happy. Like this album will not make you feel hopeful for humanity. That's just my feeling. I still dig it a lot. The highlights here are Into the Fray, One Against All, Ecocide, No Allegiance, Standing Corpses, Death Rate Solution, Drug Dated Homicide, Ultra Militants, and Breed the Killers. Listen to this album today, celebrate its anniversary, it deserves your love and attention. That's all from me, thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram in the description, and I will see you in my other videos. Also consider becoming a member of my channel, so I can make you an album review or do midi cover, whatever you need. Bye!